In question 9, we're told the line L1 has equation 4y plus 3 is equal to 2x. The point A, P, 4 lies on L1. In part A, we're asked to find the value of the constant P. The question carries one mark. We simply need to sub these coordinates in. So we'll have four lots of the y coordinate, which is 4, plus the 3 will be equal to 2p. This will give me 16. 16 plus 3, we've got 19 is equal to 2p. And we can say that 19 over 2 is equal to p. So one mark for part A. We're now told the line L2 passes through the point C, 2, 4, and is perpendicular to L1. In part B, we're asked to find an equation for L2, given our answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0, where A, B and C are integers. The question carries 5 marks. For the equation of a straight line, we need two things. We need a point when it goes through, which we've got, and also a gradient. We're told now that L2 is perpendicular to L1. So I can go ahead and find the gradient of L2. If I start off with L1, I can write this in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So I could write it as 4y is equal to 2x minus 3. Dividing both sides of the equation by 4, we'd have 1 half x minus 3 quarters. I'm going to call this m1. m1 is the gradient of L1. m1 is equal to half. Therefore, m2, which is the gradient of L2, which is perpendicular, will be the negative reciprocal. We can say m1 is half, therefore m2 is minus 2, as m1 multiplied by m2 will be equal to minus 1 if perpendicular. So I now have my point. I've got my point C, which is 2, 4. I've got my gradient, which is m2. m2 now is going to be minus 2, and I simply need to sub this into the equation of a straight line. I'm going to use y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. You can, of course, at that stage use y is equal to mx plus c. We'll have y minus 4 is equal to minus 2x minus 2. We need to put this in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. So we'll have y minus 4 is equal to minus 2x plus 4. I'm going to add 2x to both sides and then subtract 4 and we'll have 2x plus y minus 8 is equal to 0. So that's my final answer, and that now is L2. We're now told that line L1 and L2 intersect at the point D. In part C, we're asked to find the coordinates of the point D. The question carries three months. This is simply a case of simultaneous equations. We've got L1, which I'm going to call equation 1, and we've got L2, which I'm going to call equation 2. So equation 1, we have now that 4y plus 3 is equal to 2x. Lots of different ways you can solve these simultaneous equations. I'm just going to rewrite equation 2, and I'm going to write now that 2x is going to be equal to adding 8 to both sides and subtracting y. We can write this now as minus y plus now we're going to have the 8. So all I've done is rewritten this. If I subtract downwards, we're going to have now 1 minus 2. That's going to give me 5y. 4y minus minus y is going to give me 5y. I will have 3 minus 8, which is going to give me minus 5. And that is going to be equal to 2x minus 2x, which is 0. From here, we can see that y is equal to 1 by adding 5 to both sides and dividing by 5. At this stage, I can simply plug this into either equation to go ahead and solve for x. So all I need to do is put these values in, or this value of y, into any of the equations. I'm going to take this one just here. We can state then, therefore, that 2x plus y, which is 1, minus the 8 is equal to 0. So we can see from here that 2x minus 7 is equal to 0, and x will be equal to 7 over 2. So we now have the point D. The point D will be 7 over 2, comma, 1. So three marks in part C for finding now simultaneous equations and answering them. Entirely up to you on how you want to set that up. You might find a slightly slicker way or prefer a different approach. We now need to show that the length of CD is 3 over 2 root 5. 
So if we just consider now, we have C. C is the point 2, 4. We've just found D. D has the coordinates now 7 over 2, or if you like, 3.5, 1. We can use the distance formula. The distance is the square root of x1 minus x2, which we square. And then we add to this now y1 minus y2, which we square. This is simply Pythagoras. So we can say that CD is going to be equal to the square root. So we're going to have now 7 over 2 minus 2, which we need to square. So 7 over 2 minus 2, which we're going to square. And then we're going to have plus 1 minus 4, which we need to square. So just tidying this up, CD, we're going to have now, this is 3 over 2 minus 2, which is going to give me the square root of 1 half, so if I simply, sorry, 3 over 2, if I subtract that now, that's going to be 3 over 2, which we need to square, plus now for 1 minus 3, which is uh, 1 minus 4, which is minus 3, which we need to square. So let's go ahead and just tidy this up. CD will be equal to the square root of 9 over 4 plus 9, and at this stage, it's entirely up to you on how you want to deal with it. I'm going to write that CD is going to be 9 plus, multiplying the form of 9, that's going to give me 36. And then that will be over the common denominator of 4. So CD is equal to the root of 45 over 2. We can prime factor this now and we can say that CD is going to be now the root of 9 times by the root of 5 over 2 which gives us now that CD is equal to 3 over 2 root 5 as required. I've taken a long way round with that. It's three marks in total. It's entirely up to you on how you want to show that. I've just simply plugged in the values, squared them and tidied up as I've gone. We're now told a point B lies on L1 and the length of AB is equal to the root of 80. The point E lies on L2 such that the length of the line CDE equals 3 times the length of CD. In part E for 3 marks, we're asked to find the area of the quadrilateral ACBE. With this question, I think a sketch is really going to help. We've got lots of information, so I'm going to draw a rough sketch of what's going on. Let's start off now with two lines. What we're going to have then is L1 and L2. If I think about L1, L1 could look something like so. We can see from this now that L1 has a positive gradient. L2 is perpendicular. So if we go ahead and just do something like so, this is going to be L2. So if I just draw this up, this is going to be L1, and then we're going to have L2. We know that these intersect at the point D. I could go ahead and put point C here. We've already found now that the length of CD is going to be 3 over 2 root 5. So this is 3 over 2 root 5. That's from C to D. It really doesn't matter how inaccurate this is. Remember, these are perpendicular. If we take this point here, let's say that this is A, and let's say that this is B, we're told now that AB, the length of AB, is root 80. And point A and point B line L1. So what we have here is the root of 80. Now if I wanted, I could write this length as the root of 80, or we could simplify that. The root of 80 could be written as 4 root 5, which of course is the root of 80. So that's entirely up to me. What I'm now going to do is put a point down here, and this is going to be E. If we consider, we're told here now that CDE is 3 times the length of CD. So this whole length must be 9 over 2 root 5. So what I'm going to do is just draw a new little sketch here. And what we've got now are two perpendicular lines. We've got now 4 root 5. So this length AB, and let's just put this on. This is going to be 4 root 5. Now this length right here, which is going to be C to E, is going to be 9 over 2 root 5. So this is what we have at the moment. So if we put this on, let's just put this on. It doesn't matter how inaccurate this is. It just gives us some idea of what's going on. 
What we can see here is that we have a kite. We've got these two perpendicular lines. And I'm going to go ahead now and just connect that up. So it's going to look something like so. So with a kite, we do now AB multiplied by CE and divide by 2. So we can state now that the kite, the kite, and we're going to have A, let's just put it here, we're going to have AB times by CE divided by 2. So lots of different ways around this. I know that AB is 4 root 5 multiplied by CE, which is 9 over 2 root 5, and I need to divide this by 2. So if we do the calculations, 4 times by 9 over 2, that's going to give me 4, and let's just cancel this down. Let's go ahead and do some cancelling. We're going to have 4 times by uh, 9 halves, which is going to give me 2 times by 9. So we're going to have 2 times by 9 times by the root of 5 times by the root of 5, which is going to give me 5, and we're going to divide that by 2. 2's will cancel. 9 times by 5 will give me 45 units squared. So my final answer is 45 units squared. All I've done is a sketch. You could argue that you don't need to simplify that. I just think it's easier to work with 4 root 5 and the root of 80. Entirely up to you. Final answer after the quick sketch for 3 marks is 45 square units.